a Munich native, if you're going to Oktoberfest this year, you have to know these songs. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. But when you see this video, I'm actually already gonna be in Munich, home sweet home, because tomorrow, Saturday, September 17th, is the first day of Oktoberfest, or Wiesen, as we say in Munich. And when I say Oktoberfest, I mean Munich Oktoberfest, which to me will always be what I mean when I say Oktoberfest. All the other events in the world that are modeled after it, I'll always just call Cincinnati Oktoberfest or Fredericksburg Oktoberfest or whatever their names are. But when I just say Oktoberfest, I'm exclusively referring to the festival taking place in Munich. A lot of people around the world also somehow believe that Oktoberfest is like a nationwide holiday or a cultural festivity that all Germans celebrate, kind of like Carnival or Christmas, which is actually not the case. Oktoberfest is simply an event, a Volksfest, a folk festival, or internationally also often referred to as beer festival that takes place in Munich every year at least whenever there isn't a worldwide pandemic going on. And even though it's a huge event with about 6 million visitors every year the majority of Germans, especially those who don't live in that area couldn't care less about it and even in Munich there are lots of people who don't like it and who don't go. I'm not one of those people. I'm super excited to go this year because I always loved it even as a kid when we just go for the rides and the cotton candy and everything and it's been five years since the last time I went so it's going to feel really great to be back. By the way, quick reminder, I'm currently doing an Oktoberfest sale on feedyfromgermany.com so all of my Bavarian beer mugs are 15% off right now all the way through October third which is the last day of Oktoberfest 2022 and these are the exact same mugs that you'll see at Oktoberfest and just in general at beer gardens and restaurants in Munich and the rest of Bavaria. Now the festival actually has a long history that goes all the way back to a royal wedding in the year 1810 that took place at the exact same spot where Oktoberfest still takes place today. Theresienwiese. Theresa's Meadow. And it goes on for a little over two weeks, usually it's 16 days, but this year because our national holiday German Unity Day on October 3rd falls on a Monday, it's being extended for that day and it's going on for a total of 17 days this year. If you want to learn a little bit more about the history, the different tents, and all of the do's and don'ts, definitely make sure to check out this video from two years ago because I really covered everything in here that you'll need to know before you go. Then I also have a video on on all of the myths about Oktoberfest, including the chicken dance, which, spoiler alert, you won't come across in Munich. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Bavarian Trachten, the traditional clothing, check out these two videos. In this one, Ben and I talked about how to properly wear Dindel and Lederhosen and where you can get them in the US. Oh, and if you want to make sure that you pronounce all the German beer brands and breweries correctly, I have a video for that as well. I really have quite the collection of videos by now. But today I want to tell you a little bit more about the music at Oktoberfest so that those of you who are going this year can prepare a little, maybe learn some lyrics, but I'm sure this is interesting for everyone else as well just to kind of get an idea for what Oktoberfest is like and what these crazy Germans listen to when they're drunk. And since you'll need the right wireless earbuds to listen to these songs all day long and practice for Oktoberfest, this video is sponsored by Raycon and you'll even get an amazing 50% off your Raycon purchase with my link in the info box below, but I'll tell you more about that later. First, let's talk about the basics. So Oktoberfest is kind of like a big state fair, right? With lots of rides and booths and attractions. And when you walk over it, you'll hear different music coming from everywhere. But what I'm talking about today is the music that you'll hear inside the big beer tents. And there are 14 of those. They're basically like huge beer halls and they all have a stage for live music. Now, every tent has kind of a different vibe and obviously different bands because they can't all play at different tents at the same time but usually you'll get your traditional brass music throughout the day and then in the afternoon or at night there will be party bands with a singer and that's usually when everyone slowly gets up on the benches and starts to dance and sing along and there are certain songs that you'll just hear over and over again and I tried to kind of divide these into categories of English-speaking songs because yes there's going to be plenty of that German classics, so like German speaking songs that are a little bit older and have become iconic over the years. Bavarian songs, by which I mean that they have Bavarian dialect in them, which in general is something that's very present at Oktoberfest. 
and German party schlager slash Ballermann songs, even though you probably won't know what Ballermann is, but this category is full of relatively new songs in standard German with very simple and catchy melodies and sometimes kind of vulgar and sexist lyrics. Now I'm going to try and show you snippets of the songs as I go through the list, but I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out with the copyright and everything, so I can't promise anything, but I'll also definitely make sure to link a few Spotify and YouTube playlists with these songs in the info box for you. And since I definitely won't be able to cover all of the songs in this video, if you feel like I forgot an important one, please go ahead and add that in the comment section below. First and foremost, a song that even the brass band will play regularly throughout the day is this one. It's called Ein Prosit der Gemütlichkeit. Prosit is another word for Prost, meaning cheers, and Gemütlichkeit is a word that's very important in Bavarian culture. It means something like coziness, relaxation, enjoying life, kind of a mix of all of those. I even have this phrase on my coasters, by the way, that I also sell on feelingfromgermany.com. People usually take their beer, hold it up, sing along, and then it usually ends with once, zwei, drei, xufa, which means one, two, three, drink in Bavarian. So this song and this little drinking phrase is definitely the most important one to know because you'll be doing this a lot throughout the day. You'll also hear different chants and simple songs such as Ali, Ali, here and there. This one has different rhymes that go with it. For example, Ali, Ali, eine Straße, viele Bäume. Ja, das ist eine Ali. You'll also hear the band say Die Krüge, the beer mugs, to which the crowd will respond hoch, up. also sometimes say Prost ihr Säcke. Säcke literally means sacks, but in this case it's like jokingly calling your friends idiots or something. And then the crowd will respond with Prost du Sack. And then they say Danke and the crowd says Bitte. And sometimes it gets into soccer a little bit too and people will sing <laughs> which is an insult towards the soccer team of Borussia Dortmund that are the arch enemies of FC Bayern München. Now getting into the list of English speaking songs, the second most important song of Oktoberfest is probably this one, Angels by Robbie Williams. This is really the song that everyone will sing along to with all of their heart. And it's often also the last song of the night before the tents close at 11 p.m. and also the last song on the last night of Oktoberfest. And in some tents, people even get sparklers and then sing along to it before Oktoberfest is over and it's super romantic and cheesy. is that if you're from the US, you've probably never heard of the song and you've probably never even heard of Robbie Williams, which is so crazy to us Europeans because he's one of the biggest pop stars of the last 20 years and everyone knows this song and many other of his songs, but for some reason he never became big in the US, which is also why he lives over there actually, because he can live a more normal life. But anyway, Robbie Williams, Angels. Write it down. Other songs that you'll hear a lot that might surprise many Americans are Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver. That one's definitely an Oktoberfest classic. But also Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. As well 
timeless songs like YMCA. Songs that everyone can do a dance to are always good. Summer of 69, Bon Jovi's It's My Life, as well as the song Life is Life by Opus, Who the Fuck is Alice, and many other English-speaking hits such as We Are the Champions or We Will Rock You by Queen. One song that also became a big party song in Germany, I think because it was covered at some point, is Hey Baby, which originally is by the American singer-songwriter Bruce Chanel from the 60s. Hey, hey, Everyone will always sing along the ooh, ah. Now in those Oktoberfest playlists that I have for you guys, a lot of these songs actually aren't in their original version anyways, but they're on there in some kind of party cover version. Now before we get into the next category, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor Raycon and their wireless everyday earbuds that are literally perfect for everyday life. They're affordable but still have an amazing sound quality and three different sound profiles that are perfect for listening to music or podcasts, because that's what I do mostly. I always have them in when I wander through the house to feed the cats, water the plants, all that fun household stuff, or when setting up furniture, for example, which I've been doing a lot recently. I just like to listen to my favorite podcasts while I do that. And what's really cool is that I don't even need to worry about where my phone is, because you can walk up to 33 feet away, so 10 meters away, and you'll still have perfect quality with these. And I don't need to walk back to my phone when I want to pause it or something either, because I can control everything with the buttons on the earbuds. I can play and stop, skip to the next episode and regulate the volume. And the battery lasts forever too. They have a playtime of eight hours and then you just charge them in this case, which has a battery life of 32 hours. So honestly, I only need to charge them every few weeks. But of course, the main reason why I like these so much is that they sit perfectly in my ears and I never have to worry about them falling out. Even when I lay down, I don't have the same hassle with these that I've had with headphones in the past where you can't lay on the side and every time you move, they're falling out. These sit flush with your face and if you have small ears like myself you can just use a smaller size of the gel tips that they come with and I promise you they won't go anywhere. I even wear them on the plane. Here's a super flattering clip that Ben took of me on our flight to Germany the other day because I don't have to worry about them falling out and rolling underneath the seat. So long story short if you want to get a pair of Raycons too you can now get 15% off the already great price. All you have to do is go to buyraycon.com slash from Germany or simply click the link in the info box below and believe me, it's worth it. Now let's move on to a few German classics. There's a lot to share about each of these artists and songs, but I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can. So I'm going to limit this to like one sentence per song. We have songs like Marmor, Stein und Eisenbricht by Drafi Deutscher from 1965. This is a true evergreen. I'd argue that almost every German knows this chorus by heart. It says Marmor, Stein und Eisenbricht, aber unsere Liebe nicht. Alles, alles geht vorbei. Doch wir sind uns treu. Which translates to marble, stone and iron will break, but our love won't. Everything, everything comes to an end, but we'll stay loyal to each other. Then we got the Schlager classics by Ster Geier and Wahnsinn by Wolfgang Petri. For the last one, the audience will do certain chants in the chorus. It says, Das ist Wahnsinn. Warum schickst du mich in die Hölle? That's crazy. Why are you sending me to hell? And then everyone goes, Hölle, 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 Hölle. And then there are two more of those parts where the crowd shouts something, but it would be too complicated to explain now. But this could definitely be one of those songs that you might look up the lyrics for and then learn these little chants. Then you'll also hear songs by Nena, for example, like 99 Red Balloons, 99 Luftballons, that I'm sure you all know. Or Irgendwie, Irgendwo, Irgendwann by her. You'll also hear Verdammt, Ich lieb dich by Matthias Reim. Ohne dich schlaf ich heute Nacht nicht ein by the Munich Band Münchner Freiheit. Tausend und eine Nacht, where you'll mainly just need to know the one line where they say Zoom. <laughs> Tausendmal berührt, tausendmal ist nichts passiert. 
There's also a few songs by the German punk band Die Ärzte that everyone knows, such as Westerland, which is an area on the German island of Sylt in the North Sea, and they have a song about that. Everyone also knows Viva Colonia by the Cologne band Die Höhne from 2003. But you'll also sometimes hear it sung as Viva Bavaria at Oktoberfest to make it more about Bavaria instead of Cologne. One of those anthem-like songs that you'll definitely hear is An Tagen wie Diesen by Die Toten Hosen, which is a legendary German punk band that's still active today. And then you might hear the late German legend Udo Jürgens singing about the fact that he's never been to New York. Or this classic Schlager from the 70s by Marianne Rosenberg, He belongs to me like my name at the door. Getting to the songs that contain Bavarian or Austrian dialect or are fully in dialect. First up, we need to talk about this Munich band with the beautiful, not German name of Spider Murphy Gang or Spider Murphy Gang as we usually pronounce it. Their song Skandal im Sperrbezirk is not only an absolute banger to this day, the lyrics also couldn't be any more German because they sing about a prostitution free area in Munich. In case you didn't know, prostitution is generally legal in Germany, but for the Olympics in Munich in 1972, they made it illegal in certain areas downtown, so that's the reason for the song, and they're singing about a prostitute named Rosi who just keeps working anyway while all the other prostitutes are standing around without work outside of the city limits. And yes, this is a song that I knew and sang along to even as a kid. That's Germany for you. This song does have a lot of lyrics, so it might be kind of hard to learn them, but you will notice that all of the locals know the song by heart, and you can always just learn the one line, Skandalum Rosi. Another popular song by them is Schickeria, which is about the Munich High Society. <laughs> And then a very important Austrian artist is Andreas Gabalier. He's really become a superstar in the last few years. Palu is one of his most popular songs for occasions like these because everyone can sing along in the chorus, even non-German speakers, but he also has songs like Isinger Lied für die. The song Fürstenfeld is Austrian as well and it's about a town named Fürstenfeld and feeling homesick. Other more recent songs in dialect on my list are Hamkumst, also by an Austrian band. Brenner <laughs> Dutz Gurt, which was a huge Oktoberfest hit in like 2012 or so. <laughs> Again, as well as Rock Me and Anneliese by the relatively new band Vox Club. And just 
a little too commercial for my taste and are kind of forcing the whole Bavarian thing a little too much in my opinion, but most people do like their songs. And last but not least, let's talk about standard German party Schlager songs. I know I've used the term Schlager a few times in this video and I haven't explained yet what it means, but it is kind of hard to explain because it's a music genre that's pretty specific to Germany or the German speaking world. And there are different types of Schlager, but when you hear me say this, I usually refer to music with a very even beats, it doesn't like groove, it's just like boom, 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 boom. It has a simple and catchy melody usually and relatively simple lyrics that are often a little cheesy. And as I said earlier, some of them can also get a little vulgar and sexist, like the song Lila that you probably won't hear at Oktoberfest this year. I've heard that the bands have decided not to play it, but this song was the talk of the summer in Germany because it's very sexist. But anyway, we have major hits like Atemlos by Helene Fischer, who is the biggest Schlager star in Germany nowadays and who has kind of brought Schlager into a new era. Then there are a few songs that have dance routines that everyone's familiar with, such as the Fliegerlied, which is usually sung in Bavarian dialect actually, but there's also versions in standard German, so I thought it fits better in this category. But that's a dance that you should probably get familiar with before you go, even though it's literally like a kid's dance. but. Kids and drunk people are a lot alike, right? Another song with a very popular dance routine is Cowboy und Indiana. So yes, the title is Cowboy and Indian, I know. Then we have Das Rote Pferd, The Red Horse. Then there are a few different songs by an artist called DJ Ötzi from Austria, who has been making these type of party songs for a long time. And his biggest hit is Anton aus Tirol. That song was huge when I was a kid. He also does sing in dialect, but not all of his songs are in dialect and they're very party schlager, so that's why he's in this category. Another song by him would be Ein Stern, for example. Ein Stern, And a more recent hit is Cordula Grün by Josh, which is not necessarily as schlagery as the rest, but this is the category it fits the best, I think. And it's about a woman named Cordula Grün, whom the singer would like to ask out on a date. Schatzi schenkt mir ein Foto, Honey, give me a picture, which was also a huge Oktoberfest hit one year. Schatzi schenkt mir ein Foto, schenkt mir ein Foto von dir. And then we got the super appropriate song Joanna by Roland Kaiser from 1984. That is, you guessed it, about a prostitute. And this is one of those songs where people do chants in between the lines that aren't actually part of the original song, I don't think. And it's basically calling Joanna vulgar things like du geile Sau, du Luda, du Drecksau. Not very classy, but if you think about it, Oktoberfest isn't necessarily about being classy. Joanna, du geile Sau! And that was the last song on my list for today. Again, feel free to add song titles in the comments below. I'm sure I've forgotten a few important ones here and there. And of course, there are just so many other songs that you'll hear throughout those 17 days of Oktoberfest. But the reason I made this video is that I know how weird it can feel when you're in a new environment at a party and everyone knows songs and dances that you don't know. So I think your Oktoberfest experience is just going to be even more fun if you at least know kind of like what's going on and maybe know a few lines here and there. Now, all this left to say is have an amazing time at Oktoberfest if you're going and maybe I'll see you there. Auf eine friedliche Wiesen, Prost and tschüss!